Thank you so much for the invitation. I will do some kind of like introduction into the world of counter cartographies and their relation to social urban movements from our point, from our work of Collectivo Rango Tango and especially our um, compilation of counter cartographies called This is an Atlas. Um, so I'm speaking here in the name of Collectivo Rango Tango. We are a collective of public education, creative pro protest and activist research involved in all different kinds of um, actions from murals to to um, city tours, um, workshops, mapping, and so on. This happens inspired by people like Paulo Freire, stuff like ma mainly critical geography, um, action research, and yeah, the whole world of um, creative protests. So it's something in between research, education, and activism. So um, first of all, we'll start, um, hopefully I'm not boring um, all of you, and you already know this, but the kind of idea, what is critical mapping? What is counter cartography? So yeah, what? What we are talking about here. So first of all, I have to um, have to show my honor to um, Osfa and Pablo. Um, this is our first publication we did ten years ago on collective mapping, inspired by the Iconoclasistas um, from Argentina. And when when we asked the question, what is critical mapping? We used the um, Estrecho map from um, Arquitectura to yeah to answer this question. So it's really a big honor for me to be in this presentation with Osfa and yeah. We are big fans of your work um, for now 10 years or more. I also wanted to show my respect to Natasha at this point. Um, you have to go on, there's a really, really nice glossary on the um, critical mapping and monospecific movements homepage. And it has a really nice compilation of all the different terms used around critical mapping, or tactical mapping, um, counter cartographies, and so on and so on. It's really worth a look. Um, the maybe the, the easiest um, way to uh, or the most philosophic and, and optimistic way to talk about um, critical maps is this one from Dennis Wood so it's just a way to to keep our optimism alive that's the reason why um, critical maps should exist um oh next one yeah when we talk about um, critical mapping we also um keep it really simple saying, okay, the one part of it is reading maps and the other one is producing maps. So reading maps is a deconstruction of maps, a textual work reflection on the existing maps. Small example, this is the Berlin uh, Metro map um, that most of my um, yeah, co-citizens here in the city have in their mind when they think about Berlin, they have this map in mind, but this is just one possible um, projection. There's one possibility of many, many different worlds how we can imagine the public transport system in Berlin, just to keep one simple example. So we, at the conclusion of reading maps, it would be um, don't believe in any map that you don't, haven't done on your own. So the second part would be the creating maps. So a different creation of maps from a different perspective, a different context, and very important, a different um, process of knowledge creation. So I will go into this with the focus of social urban movements and also go into the direction what goes, what can be beyond mapping or how can mapping be a starting point for other things. I will use the, the chapters that we have um, used in the Northern Atlas to like, yeah, have, have some kind of structure, how urban social movements use the maps or why they use maps. So first would be maps as tool for action. And um, this is uh, yeah, one example from Germany, um, cartographic action, producing maps for manifestations, or we doing a collective mapping workshop in a manifestation in Romania, just to have it very simple. One of the best maps that I know that combine online mapping with the offline um, mapping world is 596 Acres from New York, who like make um, public accessible, the, the public um, vacant lots and help people um, to transform them into community gardens, into social centers, into um, art spaces. And yeah, to have this like really powerful combination of making, um, of ex making data accessible online and, uh, over, and at the same time being on the ground, using signs on the lots and saying, okay, this is your land. You can transform this into something useful. Another really, really impressive um, example for a tool for action is the Anti-Victim Mapping Project using the whole variety of uh, mapping from art, um, space, collective paper maps on the wall to um, narratives of displacement and resistance to global maps on housing pro protection legislation and housing justice action during the COVID pandemic. Um, I think they're a very, very good example to show how mapping is just a starting point for other actions. So they, for example, combine mapping with theater, 
with um, projection in public spaces, or in this case, listening parties to listen to the story of evicted people. All this is wrapped up in their recently um, published um, book, Counterpoints, uh, which I recommend to everybody uh, here in this presentation. Another reason for social urban movements to map is to tie networks. So yeah, that's the map that Anna's gonna show us later. I think it's a good example or a good um, starting point maybe to, to, to think about in which way this creates a network or not. I think it's always a question online maps if they really do this or they do not. One case where we did this is the urban garden community map from Berlin. Simple map, um, just showing all the, now are there are over a hundred community gardens in Berlin. And I think it's a really powerful tool to show the people they're not alone because yeah, if you're in your community garden somewhere in the periphery, you might feel alone, but if you have this map, you know that you're part of something bigger. So it's, it's a visualization of the collective identity of an urban movement. A really nice example from the, not an other publication about networks is this knitting, knitting um, mapping project to, to gather people, to say normal people, not only activists, gather normal people to discuss an issue. And this kind of a, a, a flood that occurred in Dublin and to bring them together to have some that therapeutic process, some politicization process, some collective um, discussion process around this flood and yeah, to knit together a flood wall map. Another really important um, part of doing maps for social movements and urban social movements is to build political pressure. Here, really nice example from Chile, from Valparaiso, from Grac. Um, and I think the title is the best thing of the map, if you ask me. This is a quote from the ex-mayor of Valparaiso, who was asking a citizen, who was responding to a citizen, did I invite you to live here? After like he asked him a critical question. I think it's really powerful just to, to make this visible and to show that this um, politician didn't um, understood what his job is. And at the same time, this map shows process of gentrification, touristification, processes of eviction, how um, fires that occurred in Valparaiso are combined with eviction processes and so on. Um, I go to this that fast, I think, yeah, because all of the stuff that we, um, that there's not an Atlas project and stuff we do, we put it online, it's Creative Commons, so it's an, an invitation to you to, if you're something interested in something more, you can go into detail and check it out online. For us, um, counter is always about education and also urban social movements do this. Um, here's a really nice example. Um, uh, it's a buzzy picture, a Wimmel build, it's a, like in one painted poster, um, it's, it combines all the um, urban social movements that exists in Europe, um, at least, and it's really an inv a nice invitation to discuss with, with, with kids, with young people, um, urban processes, urban struggles, urban transformation processes, um, with this map here we have a close-up, so it's this kind of map that you have to look in for hours to see all the little details. For us in our work, mapping also means um, not only to work with maps, but to, to, to turn the territory into a map and to transform the territory by mapping. So we're doing this art, collective art project with kids to discuss the city, to discuss their right to the city, to discuss how they um, yeah, can participate or exclude it from public spaces, in public space or with huge um, cardboard 3D mapping processes that we do. And the idea of this is to, yeah, to have the map as a playground to invite especially young people to like that the map becomes a kind of territory for collective ludic engagement and debate. And so that the mappers or also people who pass by are turned into spontaneous mappers that they can move themselves on the map and move the map. And like by doing this, imagining another city, another possible future um, urban environment. Talking about counter cartographies, it's always about creating visibility and also for urban social movements, it's really important to, to, yeah, to break the categorical silence, to show stuff that it's not shown on the map. Um, and here, for example, a really nice um, example from Berlin as well, um, Berlin besetzt and Berlin occupied. Um, this is one of my favorite examples because I think it was, it was really genius to, um, to make visible through a map the Berlin um, squatters movement archive that's an um, archive that existed for decades, but it was no, not really accessible. And then uh, putting to, um, by putting this into an online map, it made really exploded somehow 
the accessibility and also it was really funny to see that an online map can have such a huge impact that the yellow press the next day was really like um was um was an um was afraid that the next huge wave of um, occupations uh, and squatting is going to happen, um, which is not the case, but just by putting it online, it had this kind of image, created this kind of image, which was kind of, kind of funny. Map that we did on gentrification and resistance in Kreuzberg, Berlin. Yeah, also kind of a small example for being in map as an archive to, to, to archive all the resistance that happened in this place. And which is not really special. I think the interesting part of this map is we combined with the mural. So all the big part of the information that's on the map, it's also put it on a, on a huge mural to have this like mural archive of showing the history of resistance in Berlin Kreuzberg. We also combine this, um, these murals or collective mapping process with excursions and tours, bike excursions, boat excursions by foot to like, yeah, to make like an on the real time mapping process or to make, for example, a bike tour, the bike tour with community gardens that the day before you make like a collective mapping process of the urban garden movement in a city as we did here, for example, in Medellin, Colombia. Um, counter cartography is also always about showing the spatial subjectivity because there is a huge spatial subjectivity just to show this um, really, um, crazy example from um, Dakar, Bangladesh, from another Atlas project, um, book. It's Karai. You can see here a touristic map where Karai is just a blank spot on the map. But um, if you will see it in real life, it's something different than a, than, than a blank spot. So to show this and that this exists and to give a voice um, to the people who are living in this spot is also a really important part of uh, mapping in the urban context. A nice example that you can um, have a closer look in the non Atlas documentary we, we made is from Port Said, Egypt, to have some kind of an, to use mapping as a tool for um, um, bottom up history writing, to have like a different version of the official history, urban history. You're using, um, yeah, you can use this kind of map. It's a really complex mapping process, but I will not go into details. Um, but it's a really, really nice example of how you can use a mapping process, a collective discussion process to show the, the history, the bottom-up history, history from below. Um, when we are um, doing mapping nowadays, we also we are inspired by people like Elise Olmedo and people talking about um, sensitive, um, sensitive mapping to use other materials than just only computers and papers and and, and pencils. So using, for example, this textile um, maps from working class women from, um, from, from Morocco is really a nice example of to show how you can yeah, go into mapping processes with different kinds of peoples by using different kinds of materials to offer them different forms of um, um, expressing themselves to different um, yeah, materially in different um, forms of, yeah. As we had that before, for example, um, the listening party from the anti-fiction mapping project as well, or yeah, combined with theater, uh, with theater and all different kind of stuff. Coming closely to an end, um, I think urban social movements can or should always use contextors to, to reflect themselves as well, to use contextors also as a critical self-reflection method. You want one example from like kind of a like collage mapping process, like a more um, abstract, idea of how you can map and how you can use a map to yeah, reflect on what is going on in a city. Um, one example, I think it's pretty nice from non Atlas or it's a nice project is the um, from the um, Oxford Inter Institute for Mark Graham. Um, this, I show this one um, related to Wikipedia, but there's also one um, because it's a nicer one, but there's also another one related to open street maps to like how to um, question the use of these kind of alternative um, tools that we use if and, and yeah, if they're really that alternative uh, as we imagine them. Um, <clears throat> also, pretty simple but pretty um, good because pretty simple and um, to just question um, basic things in our daily urban life as um, the percentage of female to male street names in the city, as we can see this um, pretty sad example from Vienna. Um, 
really important um, coming to an end of this talk is um, to question also mapping itself, like if we should map or if we should not web. In the Northern Atlas, there's this really nice, nice guideline for solidarity mapping um, from the Right to the City Movement in Vienna, who made this map that you can see in, in the background. And they're describing all the problems they had um, and yeah, questioning if it's really always the best idea to make, to make a map and to make um, um, information visible and accessible and how much yeah, discussion it needs with all the actors involved, with all the movements, with all the groups that you are mapping and how much, yeah, how long this participatory collective process um, has to be to not offend anybody, to not put somebody in the wrong category and so on. And so, yeah, this the question from one of our last manuals. So should the result be public, publicly published and shared and dis dis disseminated is pretty important. Yeah, here an example from, from Minsk, from Belarus, um, where this um, is quite, from, it's already, um, yeah, eight years ago, but I think the, the, the question was um, and is still very, very important, this kind of context. And I think it's very important if we talk about mapping to also be, be sensitive in regarding to these questions. So um, coming to an end, some about the conclusion is nothing that's um, maybe not that new, but it's that it's um, as Paglin, Trevor Paglin all, all already said 15 years ago, um, that country groups can, also, can only be a departure point and they don't speak for themselves. So the map can never be the territory and the struggles will not be incited on paper or as the Ikinoclasistas put it with their collective mapping process that it can only be a part of a larger movement as it is um, in this case of the municipalist movement. And so that the mapping itself cannot be a transformation it also has to be connected with other things. Um, yeah, this is um, the two pages where you find most of the stuff I presented. We have a brand new uh, Morango Tango homepage where you can also have a look into all the other stuff. And if you go to another Atlas page, I recommend the videos. We'll have, yeah, present even maybe better than I did it right now and um, the idea what we do and what people do related to counter cryptographies. Thank you so much.